Hello everyone. So Kim here with Native Lady Bookwear. So today is going to be a pretty short video and I will be wrapping up what I read for the month of April. And yeah, so let's get started. <laughs> Hello everyone, so I hope you are all doing well. So welcome, Vitsuave, Visagi, have a seat, sit down, get comfortable, or continue doing your dishes or preparing your meals or whatever. So today I am going to be sharing with you what books I read for the month of April. So for the month of April, I actually only was able to read four books. And um, I think, I, I don't know why I was so ambitious thinking that I was going to be able to read like five. I think I have five originally on my TBR. Or no, wait, six, I think. One, one of these books wasn't on my original TBR list. And two of them that were, uh, were on my original TBR list, I just wasn't able to get to. I don't know why I thought... <laughs> I was going to have enough time to read these books, but I really, really enjoyed all of the reads that I read for the month of April. So the first book that I read for the month of April is Ernestine Hayes' The Tao of Raven, which is an Alaskan Native memoir. Wow, this book <laughs> was pretty incredible. Blonde Indian is another memoir that Ernestine Hayes has written and it's really cool because it, it very much fluidly transitions into this book and Blonde Indian the first memoir that was written by Hayes but um, this basically continues the journey of Ernestine Hayes and her return back to her Alaskan native community and land and area of where she grew up. Again, I don't rate memoirs anymore, but this was a pretty incredible read in terms of of really just something that is also very culturally strong there. Like hearing the the stories that Hayes grew up with and how she very much intertwines what is happening in this memoir in her own life. And one of those legends that really popped out and stood out, the cultural stories that were that were shared that really look at the dynamic and the cultural relationship between grandparent and grandchild. So I thought that was pretty amazing in this book. Um, also, Ernestine Hayes follows that same exact format of including not only her own personal memoir experiences but also a fictional story that kind of continues from Blonde Indian onto this one. So one of the things people have been asking me is that do you have to read Blonde Indian in order to understand what is going on in this book? And in my opinion, no. I don't feel like you have to. But if you want like that full awesome cultural like storytelling experience I, I feel like you you can start with Blonde Indian, but I feel like the story that the 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 way it's told in this book, it's very it's nonlinear. It's very I feel like the way it's told, it's very secular. It's happening like starting from one point and then going to the next, like almost in like seasons, like that, like a cycle. So I feel like you can even read this and then go and read Blonde Indian. I feel like it's very interchangeable. So I thought that was pretty genius of Ernestine Hayes. Another thing that I noticed about this book is the writing really steps up a notch too. I feel like Ernestine Hayes really comes in to their own and takes a huge leap in terms of the the writing and the and the smoothness and it's almost very poetic too on how this book is written, I, I don't know how to explain it, but you can definitely see the improvement in terms of the, the writing. So I, I don't want to share too much because I'm definitely going to be uh, reviewing this book. I'm not going to be rating it, but I'm, I'm going to review it. And I can't wait to share my thoughts with you all on this book. So this book, pretty amazing read and I highly recommend it. So yep, pretty awesome book. So the next book that I read for the month of April, and I read this book because it was the April book for 
a book club called Well Read Native on Bookstagram. It was There There by Tommy Orange. Whoa! Oh my goodness. So, um, well, one of the amazing things about reading this book was actually listening so to Tommy Orange talk about it and that was just completely incredible I was like starstruck just like whoa like that's Tommy Orange right there in the little zoom rectangle <laughs> but yeah this book was just so completely amazing this book was a definite fast-paced read i'm going to be i'm not going to discuss trigger or content warnings for everything that i've read so far because i'm going to be doing that on the book reviews but yes everything that i have basically read this month except for one has a lot of trigger and content warnings but this book was just so incredible it was fantastic it was it was like a gut punch and I, I think um, it explores so many different indigenous perspectives but when I read it each one of those perspectives had a very powerful voice of their own each character stood on their own this definitely put out there the indigenous strengths of our indigenous urban community especially when it comes to identity i feel like identity was such a huge theme with this book but also the 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 challenges and how the challenges of being within an urban community and being part of the indigenous community and how those two interloped and how they created this wonderful story that Tommy Orange wrote. So I'm not going to go too much into depth with this book, but this is a definitely a five-star read. I don't know why I did not read this sooner. <laughs> I'm probably going to be reviewing this pretty soon. I, I imagine like maybe within a couple weeks. So I, I suggest you all check this out. Uh, Tommy Orange has such an amazing voice and such a strong, 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 strong perspective on indigenous challenges and indigenous resilience. It's, it, this book was just pr pretty incredible. And I know a lot of people may have said that this book is so heartbreaking and it's there. there's so many difficult topics and, and issues that are covered within this book, but it also doesn't stereotype indigenous communities it, it gives indigenous communities a human face it doesn't stereotype or put us into these very specific boxes that we have been historically put in but it it gives us a sense of of identity but also a sense of strength and resilience as, as i said before so pretty amazing book um i cannot wait to review it pretty awesome read five star read definitely so yep y'all go check this out y'all go read it if you haven't read it yet like right now <laughs> so the next book that i uh, read for the month of april is n scott mama day's earth keeper and i was kind of like reading this back and forth and it, as you can see it is not a very long book but each poem or or writing in here is just so completely powerful there's parts that I even myself connected to because there's a part in here where he writes about Pueblo communities. I definitely saw myself reflected in some of those things. And, and also there's a really interesting thing that happens within this book. And it, it, it follows um, two, different, two different perspectives. And one of that is Dragonfly, which I really, really enjoyed. Like how indigenous life not only is is respected within indigenous communities but indigenous life is very much rep represents um something much bigger than a living thing it it, it, it can it, those every living thing um especially within indigenous communities has a story and it even has like a sense of power or a sense of sacredness behind it so that's what i really enjoyed about this book it was pretty incredible so i actually got this book <laughs> victoria uh at flowery reads on bookstagram actually sent this to me and thank you so much victoria this book was really good and it was completely amazing and 
I don't I don't think I should rate poetry because I'm not <laughs> I don't really know I don't really know a lot about poetry but I know definitely that I felt like my heart was reflected back in a lot of these the the writings that were in this book so I highly recommend this book is pretty amazing read okay so the last book that I read for the month of April and I'm actually going to be reviewing this probably within the week or within a couple of days and that book is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bowie wow such a such an incredible read I know this book is is pretty popular right now Angeline Bowie is a citizen of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa uh, native so she's from that nation but this is a YA thriller and but man Angel Angeline really is able to also fuse the heart of Anishinaabe community and also the challenges that may occur all across in indigenous nations within this book which includes identity, enrollment, blood quantum, I mean, violence against women, a substance abuse. And I feel like even though there were some parts, I, I really wanted to be developed a little bit more, but what was there, I was so content with and I was so happy with and, and I'm so happy that I read this book as soon as I could. I was going to put off reading this book. <laughs> I was gonna, I was going to read this for the month of May. I mentioned in my May TBR video is that May is actually a huge awareness month in the, in the indigenous community and that awareness topic is missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and relatives. I'm so happy that I read this book and I I just want to thank Angeline Boli for covering these topics with such finesse with such care not only did she was she able to balance out the issues that were very much heart-wrenching with a lot of other awesome things that occur in this book like indigenous humor indigenous families and communities i mean even the culture and and the strength and the even the traditions in terms of elder community and and the respect and the huge uh, reverence that we have for our elder community. So, and, and and just seeing that depicted on these pages and just developing a life of its own. But um, I cannot wait to review this book, spoilery and non-spoilery about this book. One of the reviews that I really wanted to mention was Danny Thunderbird Woman reads the the video that she shared on this but also her her bookstagram book review of this book i i highly recommend you all check that out because even though i am going to review this book as an indigenous person and an indigenous reviewer i myself i, I am not ojibwe i am not of the anishinaabe community i'm pretty sure <laughs> this is repetitive but uh native and indigenous communities are not a monolith we all each have our own languages, cultures, traditions, teachings, and um, all across the board. And it, we are so diverse, but I feel like we connect on some levels because of the oppression and the, the settler colonialism that we have experienced and are, and are still experiencing, especially when it comes to justice issues that this book highlights. Yeah, I suggest y'all check it out. It's pretty awesome. So, yep. I read four books for the month of May and these are them. <laughs> so if you stay till the end of this video, I would like you to one, share with me a book that you read in April that you enjoyed or just maybe share with me a read that you, you read in April. And um, let's see behind me, <laughs> there's flowers up there. So maybe put up an emoji of a yellow flower. So yep, I am very much done here. I hope you guys are all doing very well. I hope you guys are tackling your, your reads and I hope you guys are all safe and I hope you are all well. So until next time, I shall see you again soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>